middleweight talk right here on Double RT Boxing Show with Mr. A, the Ready Ready Talk Boxing. You know, we're going to, we're going to go into some middleweight, some news, some thoughts. You know, so basically we're going to start off with thumbs up to you for giving me your time and support. Appreciate that. You know, hopefully you return the favor, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. So, um, first off, we'll get into some nice uh, middleweight news. We know that uh, the hot topic in middleweight is Gennady Golovkin and Canelo. You know, uh, Golden Boy has put the train back on the tracks. <laughs> you know, if, if the train, I guess the train never completely left. You know, it's the wrong train that left the station, but it's a 24-hour ticket, and then it's gone. This time, it's really gone. They said Golovkin cannot get 50%, but he can get, I think they're offering 42.5, and they want 57, something like that. 57.5, 42.5. They have 24 hours to answer that, or they're going to go ahead with the negotiations to Daniel Jacobs. Now, how do I feel about the matchup? I don't know. It's all weird. It's all... I know it's a pretty good fight, but it's good. I guess it's big for boxing. It's probably the big... Canelo is the big, uh, biggest pay-per-view draw in America. The fight, I'm not, like I said, the fight is taking a long time to make and is losing luster, fire, whatever, but I'm I'm not as excited for that fight as I am, even though the Joshua and Wilder fight is taking fucking forever. I'm still excited for that fight. The Canelo and Triple G, maybe for the fact that we saw it, you know, I'm one of the people who think uh, Triple G won that fight clearly. You know, it's very competitive, very, very competitive. It not one round was really dominated by a fighter. It just, you know, when I break it down minute by minute by minute, uh, Triple G got more than one minute and forty-five seconds in most rounds. So I gave him, I gave him, I gave Triple G like. Eight rounds to four. But a very competitive fight. And then the scorecards or the, the draw is I don't I'm not in a rush to see that fight. You know, I feel Triple G clearly beat him, but hey, um what can go different enough for people and then then there's the argument that you know Canelo won the fight. A lot of people say that then you know people say that. Canelo is going to beat his ass this time because, you know, Canelo chose spots where he didn't want to fight him and he was just chilling. Now, all he's going to have to do is let his hands go and Triple G can't handle that because when Triple G, when Canelo was letting his hands go, he was getting shots off on Triple G. And then there's some people saying, well, Triple G wasn't Triple G's normal self. He was uh, a little worrisome of the, the counteraction of Canelo. So, both are good, good arguments. Chocolate and strawberries, baby. Protein. Now, you can also make the argument, okay, Triple G didn't let his hands go enough, and Canelo had spurts, but when doesn't Canelo fight in spurts? To me, that was a normal Canelo fight. If anything, he just looked... A little fluid on his body motion slipping punches but the offensive output and the action to me that was a very typical Canelo fight Can- Canelo can't fight a full three minutes for seven eight rounds he can't so there's no way how he's gonna do it for 12 rounds he takes his breaks he always goes against the ropes so when he was doing it against Triple G that was normal Canelo stuff now Triple G not letting his hands go, that was different. So, the way I see the rematch going, 
Canelo's going to do the same thing. He's going to look fantastic. Slip and punch. He's letting his hands go. He's going to take his breaks. Now, if I feel Triple G won, and a lot of people feel that way, but it is opposite. Boom, boom, boom. Peanut butter, jelly, both sides, you know, excited. And if Canelo fought his same fight, he always fights and got a draw. And Triple G didn't fight his normal fight and got a draw. Who's going to go back to their normal fight? I would say Triple G let his hands go a little more than he... Let his hands go like he normally does. Won't be as fearful of Canelo, I think. Canelo's going to have to pick up an output. An, uh, yeah, an offensive output. And to me, that's going to make him burn more energy. He's going to eventually take... Canelo's going to take his breaks. So I'm going with, you know, anyone who has something to change, it's going to be Triple G. Just go back to his normal self. I don't see Canelo giving a heavier offensive output without taking breaks. I don't see it. You know, he's a break taker. You know, he's 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 not going to fight full three minutes of six to seven rounds. So and there and so in four rounds somewhere four to six rounds somewhere. He's going to be taking lots of breaks. I think Triple G is just going to do a normal output of offense on him, and he's going to he's going to win again. That's how I feel about that fight. Now, that being said, of my opinion on that fight, I do think that the negotiations is going to go through. I believe Triple G is going to take this fight, take the 42.5%. Canelo is going to take the 57.5%. And then whatever, whoever wins regardless, it's going to be the rubber band match. Those two guys are going to make too much money not to go from a draw to a victory and give the other person a chance to win. It could even go fucking a fourth match, you know? and Because they're going to make more money with each other tie each other up from the other stiff or competition but still make more money than any competition you can give them. Now, Triple G might lose all his all his belts doing that because, you know, you figure he won't fight with Canelo. Uh, WBC is going to eventually order him to fight Charlo. So, now speaking of Charlo, we go back to Daniel Jacobs. Now, if Triple G doesn't take the offer, they say, Golden Boy say Canelo is going to finalize the negotiation with Charlo, I mean, with um, Daniel Jacobs. Now, Daniel Jacobs getting a word of this 42.5% that they're offering Triple G, he's like, wait a minute, you guys ain't offering me enough money as a backup plan, so I'm not down with the fight no more. You know, either offer me some more money. For a backup plan, you know I'm not Triple G money, but I, he said the same thing. He's winning for Triple G. I'm the next best thing out there. I des- I demand more money, and he already has a nice backup plan because if he doesn't fight Triple, or if he doesn't fight Canelo, he's remember he's been ordered by the IBF to fight his uh, stablemate Sergey Devonchenko for the IBF belt that Triple G well, was stripped of. Now. In fighting Sergey and going after Canelo, Canelo is obviously a big bag of money. Sergey is a championship belt. Now, just a random question. No, it could be easily say, no, Mr. A, it's not a duck or it's not avoidance. That's just a. Because I, I don't think it's too much. Of, I think the Canelo one is. But you could say, you could argue, it's money. Go get the money, Mr. A. Remember all that woofing and talking? You know, I'm the king of New York. I'm the king of Brooklyn. Yo, Charlo, if you want some, come get some. That, to- that stopped. <laughs> that stopped quick. And you could be like, hey, he said, fuck Charlo. Fuck your little interim belt. I want the Canelo money. Oh, why fight for your interim belt? 
I want the IBF belt, a real, uh, 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 a more weighted belt. So it's not really a duck, but it just sucks that all that talk. Like, say, okay, because like I said, then Canelo, you get more money. Sergey, you get a belt. But which, the reason why I say Canelo's a duck, because how many people out there? You leave a comment down below. Take away the money. Who's? Don't you think a lot of people think Charlo beats Canelo? And then if he fights Canelo over Charlo, that's an easier fight, right? So like, well, it's like I said, it's 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 a bunch of meaningless crap, I guess. It just. I, it sucks that I was really looking forward to that build up of Charlo and Jacob. I thought that was going to be a really good fight, but Jacob's got two great offers that just kind of almost landed in his lap a Canelo money bag and then a, a title shot. Now, that being said, we're moving on. Charlo is kind of left in the. the the win there. He has really nothing out there for him. You know, he just he's sitting there. He he's ranked number one by the WBC. He's the WBC Enzyme champion. Who can he fight? Now, of course, you got number one. Well, Jamal Charlo is the interim champion. Number one is Saul Alvarez, which is kind of well, I guess a rematch with Gennady Golovkin. Okay. You, Daniel Jacobs should fight the interim champion, but Daniel Jacobs get offered an IBF shot. So next in line at number three, Demetrius Andrade. Will he get a shot at the interim ch um, champion? And that winner gets the winner of the Gennady Golovkin and... Um, Canelo, you would think so, but the chances are they're like I said, those two guys are probably going to tie themselves up for the third fight. Now, like I said, and then after Andrade, you got Jason Quigley, you got Kamal Sarmadi, Sarmita, you got number six uh, Roberto Garcia, the silver champion, but he's he's the replacement. For, uh, we'll get into him a little bit, but he, he's he's filled in a replacement fight, so he got a fight coming up on the 23rd. Now, back to number three, Demetrius Andrade. He can fight for an uh, interim belt, the WBC, or, because he is being called out right now, Demetrius Andrade, the ghost in boxing, is being called out by number Three of the WBO, Walter Conton, was it Conton Duco, du Duo, Conton Duco, Walter Conton Duco. He's calling Demetrius Andrade out. And he's calling Daniel Jacobs out. He's call, well, he's not really calling them out. He's calling for the WBO to give him an interim shot. He's like, hey. I either want to. I'm number three. No, I can't get a fight. Order either number one or number two to fight me for an interim belt, so I get a shot at Billy Joe Saunders when he's healthy. So right now, remember, Billy Joe Saunders is hurt. There's no champion in the WBO, so Walter's like, "Hey, let me fight number one or number two to be the sub champion, and then when Billy Joe comes back, we fight him to see who's the real champion." Much like um, Dogbo and Juarez did. They fought for an interim belt in the WBO. Dogbo beat Juarez. And then when Magdaleno came back, the interim champion fought the real champion. And we all know Dogbo whooped his ass. So, Walter. Uh, then here it goes again. Quantan Duco is asking for the same favor in the WBO. Let me be. Let me have a shot to be. Uh, a temporarily champion to the real champion come back and I'll fight him to see if I can become the real champion. And he's called, like I said, he called out Demetrius Andrade. He's number one. 
let me fight number one. Daniel Jacobs is fighting. He's ordered to fight the IBF. You know, skip him. Give me the shot for an interim belt. So right now, Demetrius Andrade, for being a ghost and not doing a damn thing in boxing, he's he's lining up to be in a really good spot. Number one is over there in the WBC. You figure number one, Saul Alvarez, tied up with Triple G. Daniel Jacobs, possibly tied up with Triple G. Or Sergey, most likely Sergey, if he's not even our. And then, like I said, number three, Demetrius Andrade. Jamal, Char- uh, Jamal Charlo got to fight someone to defend that belt. Or he had to skip him over and fight some lesser known person. Gary Sullivan, Willie Monroe, Yamaguchi Falco, Jack Kukle. So. It would not be a good look if Jamar Charlo can't fight number one and number two, but can fight number three, Demetrius Andrade, but chooses to go somewhere else. You know, they're not getting major money, so money should not be the problem with any of those two guys. So if, if Dimitri Andrade can't fight him, he, he's number one in the WBO. He's being called out. Only by uh, Walter, not directly as a him. Walter is just wanting a WBO interim title shot. He wants to win up fight number one or number two. He don't care who he fights. So Demetrius Andrade should have a fight announced within like the next six, seven months. He should. Then now we're going to move on to a fight that just happened on the ninth. You know I. Because the ninth this weekend was a lot of boxing. You had uh, Terrence Crawford and Jeff Horn. You had um, Delphine Persoon defending her WBC female lightweight title. You had uh, Zena Ch- uh, what's that? Zungju Chow def- uh, getting the IBO minimum female champion. You had, what else on the ninth? There are so much fights on the ninth. You had a... Uh, you had the, the AL, ALA, the Filipino card over there. You had uh, well, you had uh, uh, Maurice Hooker, who Hooker defeating Terry Flanagan. It's so much boxing on the ninth that a lot, a lot of things were going under the radar. And when one of the fights that went under the radar, you know, right here on the Double RT Boxing Show with Mr. A, we always try our best to get the coverage. Or at least talk about them. I, I don't get no damn coverage. You know, I'm sitting in Anaheim, chilling, watching boxing right here. You see what we see, you know. But we talk about the ranking, the, you know, the fi- not not just the top two, but we, we talk about number 15 to number five. You know, fit, the people who move the move up the charts, and and the ninth was number on the ninth was number nine of the WBC, Jack Kukle. And he's also ranked number seven of the WBO. Now, if you remember the name, if the name sounds familiar, you don't quite know him. It's the guy Demetrius Andrade came back against, not not Atlantis Fox, the one before him, where he went over the seas. I think it was like Germany. He looked it was a little off-putting performance. You know, he came in kind of heavy, sluggish. That that opponent, that was Jack Kukle. He fought on the ninth. So, and uh, he had a six-round stoppage against uh, a Rodriguez. What was his first name? Uh, Aran- Arantis. Arantis Rodriguez. And that fight, that fight was, um, it was a nice little competitive fight. Um, Jack. Controlled the fight, you know. Never once and during the fight did uh, Rodriguez look like he might upset the fight and steal it from Jack. But he, he showed some competitive signs. He didn't just fold in. Uh, and then like Jack, at, at, almost at any given moment, they, they were they'd be cha- exchanging, exchanging down at, at will. Jack would just let his faster hands go. Up top to the body, to the body, up top, up top, you know, to, to, to make sure he let Rodriguez know, like, no, I, I, this is my fight. You're here as my opponent. And in round six, uh, the fight started. 
and then the round started with like two, the first like 15 seconds, Jack threw a, a nice little right out, and it like it, it clipped him like it clipped him like on back of the head. And he clicked Rodriguez, and Rodriguez was like, you know, did like a little, a little like a shake off, and then he threw another left, and then like this one instead of clipping the back of the head, clipped him like right on the chin, and he just kind of like stumbled. And then right there, Jack, Jack, uh, just bomb rushed him with punches, <laughs> up, down, uppercuts, the body, body, jab, jab, up. He threw like a good twenty unanswered punches at him, you know, like uppercuts. I said to the body, both hands, and then he kind of slowed down a little bit, threw like another ten, fifteen unanswered punches, and because. I guess you could say Rodriguez maybe threw like one or two little swings back, but there was a lot of unanswered punches, a total of about 30 punches maybe, at least 20 to 25 punches in about a 10-second, 15-second span. And it got to the point where like Jack like, was punching. He stopped. He looked at the referee like, dude, you're not going to stop this? <laughs> he threw some more punches, and then finally the referee stopped it. And, and like I said, after the referee stopped it, Rodriguez had no problem with the um, stoppage, he kind of like, whew, whew, like, thank God, man, that dude was fucking me up, thank you, thank you for stopping me, then what was, what was, uh, that dude's name, Rodriguez, this is a double RT boxing show, I'm your host, Mr. A, just, the, the, the name itself would just bother me, a, a, a dolly set, a dada set, Rodriguez. Oh, and and in doing so, uh, Jack Cuclay became the new because the belt. There was a European uh, Union middleweight title on the line, so it was vacant. Jack Cuclay became the new European Union middleweight champion, and again, he's ranked number nine by the WBC and the number seven by the WBO. So that he became busy. And now before we go, we're going to say there, there are uh, two middleweight fights coming up on the 23rd. And that is, if the, if the date of the 23rd sounds familiar, that was when uh, Billy Joe Saunders was supposed to fight uh, Martin Murray. You know, you've seen the whole, if you, you know, Billy Joe went on, you know, called Martin Murray all types of, asses and they, they call each other both asses and on social media but the replacement for Billy Joe Saunders against Martin Murray who is ranked number five by the WBO number seven by the IBF and so that's all Martin Murray is he's taken on number six of the WBC Roberto Garcia now, if you if you watch some of my videos uh, about who Canelo can fight without Triple G and without Danny Jacobs and all that, I thought maybe a comeback fight. I remember originally they said he was gonna fight November and December. I thought in December would be the big fight and November would be a touch up fight. And one of my opponents was a uh, a small name was Roberto Garcia. It gets him up in the rankings, but WC put him right back at number one, so he doesn't need a ranking, which is kind of weird. But he's 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 the, he's the WBC silver middleweight champion, Roberto Garcia. So he's fighting Martin Murray on the 23rd, and then also on the 23rd is a uh, where is he at? Steve Butler. Now I don't know much about Steve Butler. I don't have to find out about him, but he's number eight by the WBO. And he is taking on good old veteran Carson Jones. So that should be a nice. I know what Carson Jones is going to bring. He's going to bring a fight, unless he's just you know really stopping. You know, against Ted Cheeseman, he lasted about a good five rounds. He threw everything he had. And he started to gas out. So we'll see where he's at right now. So that fight is on the 23rd in uh, Canada, Quebec, Montreal. So Steve Butler, number eight for the WBO. And before we do go off, those are the two fights. And for some odd reason, uh, Anthony Modine is a little 
being news. He's number 13 by the WBO. Ever since uh, Jeff Horn lost a, ever since Jeff Horn lost against Crawford, you know he won. He wanted to fight Jeff Horn before before Crawford. That would be a catchweight, probably like at 155, 154. You know you got an aging veteran Australian star against a young buck star. That's a nice cash fight out in Australia. So Anthony Modine is still trying to get that fight against Jeff Horn. And at this point, Jeff Horn just got really schooled. I don't, I don't, he, I don't think he got beat down, but he got schooled by Crawford. A nice cash grab against a nice star at like Mundine. Would be a good bounce back fight for him. Now, can he win it? Who knows? A Mundine, to me, he might have knockout of the year so far. Uh, between him and uh, I think his name is Nick Webb, those guys might. That's like one and two knockout of the year. I think. Yeah, I think. I think Mundine is number one and Nick Webb is number two for knockouts of the year. So, if Jeff Horn wants to get in the ring with the early candidate of knockout of the year guy go get that money this is the double rt boxing show i'm your host mr a talking some middleweight talk thank you for your time and support thumbs up before you sign off and if you have not subscribed please subscribe appreciate the support